Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are continuing our video series on trigonometry by looking at how to find a side on a right angled triangle. And this is our fourth video in our series. It's aimed at students from grade nine through to grade 12. And in this video, you're going to find out using some worked examples, how to find a side, and then we'll have a quick chat about what's coming up next. So let's get straight into it. And we're gonna talk about the general process on how to find a side on a right angled triangle. And you'll notice I've got a right angled triangle on the bottom right hand of the screen I'm going to take you through the general process of how to find the side of the unknown and in this case we can see that's a hypotenuse so our very very first step is to label our triangle with a hypotenuse and an opposite and an adjacent and we did run through this in our previous video I hope you've watched it so we first of all going to label that hypotenuse move on to the opposite side and then what's left over is our adjacent side and it's adjacent to the angle that's provided our second step is to choose an appropriate form Formula. In this case, we're going to look at the information that's been provided to us. What do we have? Well, if we look at what we've got, we've got an angle and that tells us which sides we need to use for our trigonometric ratio. And we can see that we've been given information about the opposite sides. That's quite important. That's the information that we have. Now, we also need to look at what we need to find and we need to find the unknown side, which is our hypotenuse. Based on this information, looking at what we have and what we need to have, we can choose a formula. We can see here we've got the opposite and the hypotenuse. We select a formula and we're going to use the one that has an O and an H on the right hand side. And that, of course, is our sine formula. Once we've chosen our formula, our next step is to write it down. It's always important not just to write SO or SOKOTOA write the full formula and then substitute the information given into the formula and as with any situation where we're using formulas we then follow that through by evaluating showing all our steps of working and we work it out on the calculator and then finally we're going to write a statement now I'm going to show you how to do this now all these six steps using some worked examples so let's start with worked example one We've been given a triangle, we need to find the value of the unknown side in the triangle, which is shown with the letter X. And we need to give our answer correct to two decimal places. So our first step, as we mentioned before, is to label our triangle. So let's look at our triangle and first of all, go across from that right angle and find your hypotenuse, it's your longest side. Now look at the angle that's been provided, 28 degrees. That's then going to show us the side that's opposite that angle is the one we want to use happens to be our unknown and we're going to label that as our opposite side what is left over is our adjacent side now you can see in this particular situation we've been given information about our angle we've been given information about our adjacent side and we need to find the opposite in fact in this question the hypotenuse is not going to help us at all it's not the unknown and it doesn't give us any information about this triangle so we are basically going to ignore the hypotenuse focus on our opposite and our adjacent so we ask ourselves those questions. What do we have? What do we need? And from there, we can choose a formula. We've got the O and we've got the A. We need OA, that's TOA. So that's our tan formula. So that's our opposite and our adjacent is going to form the part of our formula. So our next step is to write the formula down in our working and then we're going to substitute into that formula so I'm going to take the opposite side which is x and my adjacent side which is 18. Now it's important to remember you might see over there on the left hand side we do need to substitute the information about the angle as well. Theta represents our unknown or our given angle and the angle that's given to us to work with is 28. Now if we put tan 28 onto a calculator and I'm going to show you that right now so if we put 1028 into our calculator, our calculator has memorized all of the different information for all the different possibilities for the numbers with 10. So if we press the equals button, we can see that the tan of 28 or the tangent of 28 is a number with lots of different decimal places. It's a real number. So anytime you see sine, cos or tan with a number after it, it actually represents a value for that angle. Okay, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to rearrange this particular formula now and we're going to bring 18 to the other side of the equation. We're trying to get X all by itself. So we're multiplying both sides by 18. Now, this is actually a number. So if we type into our calculator 18, then the 10 button that you can see here 
and then 28 and press the equal sign, we're going to get a value for x. It's 9.5707 and so on. We've been asked to round that to two decimal places, so let's do that now. So we find that x is equal to 9.57 centimetres to two decimal places. Let's look at worked example two. In this case, we've got to find the unknown side again, and we've got to find it with the variable y and also round to two decimal places. It's very similar to what we just did. Okay, so our first step, once again, always label your triangle first. A lot of students do skip this step. They think they can do it just by inspection, and that's where we make little mistakes. So it's a good idea to get in the practice of labeling your triangle. Well, we can see that the first piece of information we've got is our hypotenuse. It's opposite our right angle. And then we're going to use our 57 degrees to inform us, which is the opposite side. And then finally, what is left over is our adjacent. Then the next thing we're going to ask ourselves to do is choose a formula. The way we choose the formula is to look at the information we've been given. We've got an angle and we've also got an adjacent side and a hypotenuse. In fact, our opposite side in this case is completely irrelevant to us. So we need to think about a formula that uses A and H on the right hand side, Sokotoa. The cosine formula is going to use A and an H adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So now we need to actually write our formula because we've chosen one and substitute into that formula with the information that we've been given. Now this time you'll notice that our variable Y that we're trying to find is on the denominator of the fraction. So it's very tempting to follow the process we just followed for worked example one and to move 13.5 to the other side of the equation, which is the absolute wrong thing to do. What we actually need to do is multiply both sides by y and that way we will get um, the fraction to go away. So then we end up with y cos 57 equals 13.5. Now we're still not quite there. We still haven't isolated y or made y the subject of our formula in order to solve. What we now need to do is divide both sides by cos 57. So 13.5 divided by cos 57 is now going to leave me with my answer for y. Let's do that on the calculator. So all I need to do this time is type in 13.5 and then press divided by and then I find my button here for cos, the cosine button is right there, and type in 57 and press the equals button and I get the answer. So 24.787 and so on. But of course, I need to round that to two decimal places. And I find my answer is y is equal to 24.79 millimeters. Let's do a question now where we've got a worded problem. These are the ones that people often get stuck on. So Andy wanted to rescue his cat at the top of a tree. His ladder is six meters long. So how tall is the tree if the angle the ladder makes with the ground is 32 degrees? We need to unpack this by drawing a picture. So that's our very first step. So I've got the tree on the, as the vertical and the ladder makes an angle with the top of the tree. Of course, we're going to put our, our ladder on a slant with the ground and a ground is our base. Now, the presumption here is that the tree is perfectly vertical and that the ground is perfectly flat and that they will make a 90 degree angle with each other so that we can solve the problem. The angle we make with the ground is 32 degrees. So that's the ladder and the ground, this angle in here that they're making together. Okay, so I've got all the information from my problem on my picture. My next step is to label my triangle. 32 degrees is my reference point for my opposite and my adjacent. I could already see where the hypotenuse is. It's six meters, it's the ladder. But the opposite side is my height of my tree and the adjacent side will be the ground. My next step is to choose my formula. So thinking again about what do you have? You've got a hypotenuse. What do you need? You need an, um, the side of the opposite. Now notice it's labeled A. Questions will often trick you by labeling the unknown with a letter of O or A or H. You just need to be aware it's not the adjacent side. It's the opposite side. You've just labeled that. So be very careful. We're trying to find the variable A and it's our opposite. So we've got, we need an O, we've got an H, that's O, so, so we're going to choose our sine formula opposite over hypotenuse. We're going to substitute now into that formula, the letter A divided by six is going to be equal to the sine of 32, which is our key angle for this question. 
Now, as we did earlier in worked example one, we're gonna multiply both sides of the equation by six to get A all by itself. And we've got six sine 32. Why don't you try putting that on your calculator now? Simply type six sine 32 and press the equals button and you will find that A is equal to 3.18 meter. Now this is a worded problem, so we can't just stop there. We need to write a statement as we always do with worded problems. So we're going to finish this off by saying that the tree is approximately 3.2 meters tall. Notice that I rounded it to a more reasonable number for a real life context because the question didn't tell me how many decimal places so I could make that rounding. But then I've also given a little caveat there, approximately. Well, that's all we have time for today. What is coming up? Our next video, we're going to cover how to find an angle, an unknown angle inside a triangle using trigonometry. We're going to move on to elevation and depression, bearings, applications of trigonometry in non-right angle triangles, and so much more. And if you found this video super helpful, why not tell a friend or your teacher? Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button. You can also tell us in the comments that you found the video helpful. It always makes my day to hear from you guys. And also, if you've got any questions at all, you can contact McClutchy Mass at McClutchyMass at yahoo.com or send us a message in Facebook Messenger or on Instagram. Well, thank you so much for joining me here at the channel. My name is Natalie McClutchy. You've been watching McClutchy Maths. Have a wonderful day.